Have you ever seen the Aurora Borealis over Bora Bora? No? Well, today you're gonna with the Aurora Bora Borealis. My name is Leandro Demon Riva. This is the Educated Barfly. How to ruin a cocktail? Add crushed ice. Let's get into making the drink. All right, another cocktail from the beach bum himself. This is cocktail number two on our exploration of the grog log. Now, here's the deal, guys. Uh, first of all, um, I'm gonna start making this cocktail in a second, but you're not gonna see me squeeze any lime because guess what? I have enough lime left over from the last cocktail to just do the quarter ounce that we need. So we're doing quarter of an ounce of lime juice and get our orange juice out. So we're gonna do quarter ounce of orange juice as well. A teaspoon of orja. Oh, okay. So original cocktail calls for Coco Lopez. I know a lot of you guys can't find Coco Lopez, so we're just doing the cream of coconut that I usually house make. And we'll be doing uh, a half an ounce. I ran out of bottles, so we have to do it out of the jar. So a half an ounce of uh, cream of coconut. And is that what we're calling it, cream of coconut? That's what we standardized on our last syrup. I said, it would just be bullheaded of me to say that this is coconut cream or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Because everyone beat me into submission, we were calling it cream of coconut, which is coconut milk with the addition of sugar would then be cream of coconut. All right, then we're gonna do one ounce of Jamaican rum, one ounce of Puerto Rican rum, Ooh, I can smell the funkiness of the Dr. Bird. Oh, it smells good. The original recipe calls for blended for 15 seconds on low. So I'm assuming it's a Hamilton Beach and then put into a large cocktail glass. So uh, I'm not sure how much ice I'm really gonna put in here, but it's basically like a shake and dump into a cocktail glass. Um, we only have the, I mean, we have that really disgustingly large martini glass that you brought here, Marius, but mm -hmm. other than that, we only have just like the six ounce glasses from um, Cocktail Kingdom, or we could do like some other nice stemware that isn't necessarily a cocktail glass. We could do, you know what, you know what? This. It's probably voluminous enough to do what we want to do with it. Unfortunately, it is not chilled, but that's okay. Chill your glasses before you serve them to people. All right, we're gonna do, I think just one, maybe, there we go. I don't know, don't want to overdo it with the ice here. Blend on low for 15 seconds. And then, The, uh, just a little too much ice. Just a little, just a tiny bit too much ice, but all right. The original recipe for this doesn't call for any garnish. So I didn't put any garnish on it, but you know, an orchid flower might be kind of nice or even like a small sprig of mint might be kind of nice. Not necessary, let's taste it. Ooh, very rum forward. And get a little bit of that coconut. Definitely the lime. A little bit of the orange. It's more balanced than I thought it would be. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty balanced. Just, just it's just, it's balanced but like on the slightly boozier end of balance, I think. This cocktail, when you look at the book, it says this cocktail is our version of a fern gully. So naturally I went to go see what a fern gully was. Obviously the first thing that popped up in Google was the likable children's film from 1992, starring Christian Slater, Samantha Mathis, and Robin Williams. But it also is a drink. I couldn't find any history for the drink, but I did find that in the original recipe, instead of having orgia, which is the almond syrup, they put creme de noyau, which is an almond liqueur, and it would have tinted this red. And there was half an ounce of it as opposed to a teaspoon. So this is the Beach Bum's reconstruction of that old drink. It might be kind of nice to taste that old drink at some point. Uh, creme de noyau is a little bit hard to get, but Tempest Fugit Spirits makes it. But it's just one of those uh, liqueurs that I don't think a lot of companies produce it. It's very obscure. It's only in a handful of classic cocktails and uh, it is pretty sweet. We might have a bottle, I don't know, but uh, there it is. The Aurora Bori, sorry. The Aurora Borealis, now was it? The Aurora, the Aurora Bora Borealis. So there you have it, the Aurora Bora Borealis. If you like this channel, hit like, hit subscribe. It really helps us out. Hit the bell icon if you want notifications when we do our videos or when we post our videos anyway. 
And uh, check out our website, theeducatedbarfly.com for uh, merch, for our virtual bottle program, articles. We want to extend a heartfelt thank you to all of our patrons and YouTube members. You guys are the reason why this channel even exists at all and why we are able to do what we do. And we really, really could not thank you. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you guys are on the fence about maybe joining our YouTube membership and patrons, I'm just, they get perks that you guys don't get and they're pretty good perks. So you should just, uh, you should just pull the trigger on that one and do it. And I will see you guys on another time. You didn't want to engage on the Aurora Borealis, huh? Oh yeah, no, I, not really. I don't know anything. I mean, the Aurora Borealis is the Northern Lights, right? Uh, yeah, they, and, it's in uh, southern you, too. You see those in Norway, I'm assuming. Northern and southern hemispheres. Right, northern and southern hemispheres, right. So just in the places that it's very cold. Actually, you see them in Canada as well. You can see them. I used to see uh, northern lights in Ontario, Canada, where I went to camp as a child. Mm -hmm. So you can see them there. Uh, cold weather brings it about, right? And uh, yeah, it's just yeah. gases in the atmosphere, right? Uh, no, well, yeah, kind of. It's like uh, it's the solar winds and charging particles and the magnetic field and stuff. So why am I always seeing it over a snowy scene? Does does temperature uh, have nothing to yeah, do with it? Yeah, it probably it probably prompts it, it makes it better or, or charges more, more or something. Or something. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, yeah, and then uh, they have it on other planets too. See aurora bora. Borealis, so we're tr thinking that there's no Aurora Borealis in Bora Bora, is that what we're thinking? Yeah, yeah probably not. I don't think so. That's I don't fun, think it is. But name. you know, it is a tiki cocktail and it's kind of a fun name. And uh, yeah. Well, or know. maybe that's why, because there is no Bo uh, Aurora Borealis on Bora Bora, so this is the Aurora Borealis for Bora Bora. That's... This is the Aurora Borealis for Bora Bora. Yeah. The this is the Aurora Bora Borealis. This is the only Aurora Borealis. I mean, it's just one of those cheeky plays on a couple of names or whatever, you know? It's uh, it's a nice, it's like, it's 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 just a cheeky play on a name. And they took that, they took that. Whether it makes any sense with the cocktail doesn't matter because they took that opportunity. And I, you know what, I support that. I support that. I support you, Jeff Beach Bomberry. All right, anyway, uh, I guess that's it for this uh, episode. Only the members will probably be seeing this, but uh, if you are seeing it and you are not a member, you are lucky, because that means Marius is feeling generous this week.